Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're talking about Jupiter, and specifically about what if Jupiter actually didn't exist in our solar system? What would really happen to the entire solar system, and would there be life on Earth? So, today we're going to make Jupiter disappear, and find out what would happen. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So Jupiter is the most massive planet in our solar system and has quite a lot of gravitational influence on objects nearby. But we know that Jupiter wasn't always located in this region of space. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that it was a lot closer to the Sun before. Now, this uh, topic is actually based on a paper published by two scientists. Uh, one of them was Greg Laughlin from University of California, Santa Cruz, and the other one was uh, Konstantin Batygin from Caltech. And what they decided to study is, they looked at all of the other solar systems out there, specifically exoplanets in those solar systems, and they compiled a statistical representative of pretty much the average of various planets um, in those systems. And this is kind of what it looks like. So if I were to actually go to a different exoplanet, like for example, if I were to pick Kepler 11, you would see that things here are a lot closer to the star than they are um, in our own solar system. And as a matter of fact, the farthest planet is at a distance of something like under one astronomical unit. So like almost half of, or maybe like 0.7 astronomical unit. And the closest planets are way, way closer. And so many of these planets are actually super hot. And this seems to be a pattern that's repetitive across the galaxy. Many exoplanets, many stars with exoplanets seem to have planets that orbit very close and also a lot of these planets are what we would call super earths they're basically five six seven eight times more massive than our own earth and on top of that there doesn't really seem to be uh, many other earth-like planets there might be one or two but not four like in our own solar system so this created a bit of a conundrum how is it that a lot of these stars have the super earths like Kepler 11e at mass of 11 masses of Earth. And uh, a lot of these are also ridiculously hot because they're so close to the sun, to the star. Um, here the temperature is 330 degrees Celsius. But on our own, uh, or in our own solar system, on our planet Earth, things are a little bit different. So if we look at our own solar system, the majority of planets are relatively far away from the sun and we have gas giants on the outskirts and basically nothing like super earths anywhere in sight and so they decided to study this phenomenon and realized that well it seems that jupiter might actually have a tremendous amount of influence furthermore jupiter is actually the reason why there are no super earths in our solar system because it very likely approached the sun relatively close and we're going to just do that right now we're going to remove the terrestrial planets and we're going to add a bunch of super earths like Gliese 876d right here so we're going to add a bunch of them orbiting around uh, the sun and we're going to move Jupiter to where they think it was specifically at a distance where Mars really was so something like um, 1.5 astronomical units and the reason why it moved so close is because back then the sun still had a lot of a lot of dust around it specifically uh, stellar dust and this dust as it sort of collided with Jupiter as basically Jupiter passed through these gas clouds so we can emulate this by colliding a bunch of asteroids with it so as it passed through this gas cloud uh, it got slowed down and over time this is billions and billions of years ago it slowed down to uh, to be much closer to the Sun and because this was the first gas giant to be formed it uh, had quite a lot of influence so we're going to move Jupiter a lot closer now and here the distance is going to be about 1.5 astronomical units and let's let's see what actually happens to those uh, super Earths that are orbiting around our Sun right now we're actually going to remove some of the extra particles so that the game doesn't slow down and let's run this a little bit faster and find out what actually happens so because Jupiter is so ma massive and has so much gravity almost right away it's going to start affecting these planets and when we really take that long for them to start either flying away or possibly colliding with each other 
or possibly colliding with the sun. And according to the scientists behind this paper, a lot of them actually got projected into each other and essentially they did this. So we're going to simulate this with uh, this, this planet right here. They basically collided with each other and here's that collision between two very large super Earths and their collision created a bunch of planetesimals and a bunch of smaller objects specifically similar to uh, components that would then create Mercury, Earth, Venus and Mars. So these collisions uh, were the result of Jupiter causing quite a lot of trouble in this region. So let's just wait a little bit longer and see what actually happens to the system after just a few uh, game years. So we're going to accelerate time once again. And we're going to run this simulation in relation to Jupiter and see what happens. And only within a few years, you'll notice that it already kicked out one of the exoplanets, or one of the uh, super that is, and uh, it changed a few orbits, not, not dramatically, but with time, with millions of years of this type of action, it would very likely change them completely. And so a lot of these planets would very, very likely end up colliding and possibly escaping the solar system and possibly colliding with either Jupiter on, or each other. So Jupiter's action here was quite prevalent. Now, what happened after that? So there was a lot of basically mass here, a lot of planetesimals flying around, creating what would then become Mars, Earth, Venus, and uh, and Mercury. But then something else happened, and what, that was, of course, the creation of Saturn. And as soon as Saturn was made, it was also made a little bit closer. And it started pushing, or pulling, that is, on Jupiter. And this pulling action caused Jupiter to move away. It caused it to basically start moving out to where it is today and over the next few million years it's going to increase increase its um, semi-major axis to about five-ish astronomical units. So th all of this was basically because of the other second most massive gas giant, Saturn. And this scientific model actually has a name and this name is Grand Tech. In this scenario Basically, Jupiter uh, kind of is perturbed by the gas first, comes closer to the sun, and then Saturn appears and moves it away from the sun. And a lot of things in the solar system change dramatically. And so because of this, these two scientists think that um, this is why we don't really have any super Earths. This is why solar system is so unique compared to other um, outside of solar system systems, specifically systems with the exoplanets. And this is also why it very likely caused a lot of collisions uh, from the asteroids as it was basically moving around the solar system. And those asteroids in the early solar system brought quite a lot of materials to our own uh, Earth. So things that we now take for granted, specifically things like water and organics, a lot of these, these things actually came from the collisions with various asteroids. And it's very likely that it was Jupiter that kind of brought them there through his or through its gravitational interaction. Now, if Jupiter wasn't really there, we would still have quite a lot of super Earths. And it's very likely that our own planet Earth would look nothing like this and may have actually not even had any life on it because it would have been too hot. And for this reason, we have to kind of be thankful to Jupiter for its action. And even today, uh, what Jupiter does for Earth is actually protects it. It protects it from things like comets and things like asteroids in the asteroid belt by pulling things away from here toward it and making sure that Earth doesn't, doesn't get them. And also when comets come through the inner solar system, Jupiter often uh, dislodges their path and they often collide with Jupiter, just like it happened in 1994 when we observed the collision between Schumacher Levi uh, comet and Jupiter. So this is what it is. This could have been landing on Earth and destroying life, but in instead it landed on Jupiter. So this is why Jupiter is actually a very, very important planet in our solar system. And this is how it may have actually created the life and caused our Earth to be the way it is. So if it wasn't for Jupiter, we probably wouldn't even exist.
So that's all I wanted to say in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.